All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Lavinia, and I'm a second year master's student at the School of Information. And today I'm going to talk to you about deep learning um, and its presence in many of our experiences. Um, and because I have five minutes, it's going to be a shallow dive. Um, but I just thought it'd be a creative title as well. So what is deep learning? Um, it's a branch of machine learning based on a set of algorithms that attempt to model high-level abstractions and data. That really confused me. It was from Wikipedia. So I'm going to try and simplify it down a little bit. So what I want you to do um, in this example is imagine a young boy. Um, he has, sees a creature and he expresses some confusion. He doesn't know what it is. Someone tells him that it's a dog. And as the boy grows up, he learns, that's the important part here, what a dog is. And he's able to distinguish what a dog is from what a cat is based on their features. So Facebook works in a similar way. If you upload pictures of yourself, it automatically tags them based on your features. Say even if you upload some pictures of your friends or maybe some lookalikes, um, it's able to distinguish your features from others, which is really interesting. So the way this works is that Facebook breaks down a face into different components, then puts like such as, yeah, pixels, edges, lines, and then takes combinations of these components to identify a face. Um, and even within facial recognition, Facebook research is doing amazing things with 3D modeling and artificial neural networks, um, such as in this example shown here. And what's amazing is that it actually has a 97.25 accuracy and identification rate, almost similar to that of a human. So it's interesting how the machine can model that of a human. So we have more visual examples of machine learning. What about auditory examples? Natural language processing is a field today um, which, in which computers can identify and pro excuse me, process the human language. Um, so you know when you're saying a text to a friend or getting Google directions. So Andrew Ng is one of the leading researchers in deep learning. He says that it happens to have the property that if you feed it more data, it gets better and better. So we go back to the example of the boy and the dog. And the boy didn't just see one dog and learn what a dog was. He had to be exposed to multiple dogs so that he could develop a schema, right, a set of features for what a dog was so that he could identify them by himself. And so many liken the field of deep learning to neural networks and how our brain actually learns concepts. So deep learning and human computer interaction, do they actually lead to an improved user experience? So I'm going to talk about some instances where deep learning and machine learning are present. Um, and I think it's up to you to decide if you think they improve the experience or not. So we'll start with security. So security, um, one example that comes to mind is surveillance, right? They use facial recognition um, using the concepts we talked, and it's able to determine if someone, you know, it's someone you need to look out for or not. But an example I wanted to talk about was um, for those of you who are iPhone users and you use the fingerprint mechanism to authenticate your phone. What's really interesting about this example is that the training time to train the phone for your fingerprint is so quick. And it's pretty powerful compared to the four-digit passcode um, used before. Another example is personal personalization. Um, for many of us, you know, we use Google search all the time. Based on um, our previous searches, the sites that we visit, Google search caters the results to show you thing results that you would like. But I wanted to talk about an example from Spotify called Discover Weekly. Discover Weekly, many say it's the best friend that creates a new playlist for you every week. Um, but this really happens. As you're listening to music, you're training the Spotify app to create a playlist for you based on your preferences. And finally, automation. Automation, I think, is one of the strongest presences of deep learning and machine learning. Um because you train an object and then, or a machine, you kind of leave it alone and it's able to cater to you. So I wanted to talk about um, this adorable little robot called Jibo. So Jibo, I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He's basically an at-home robot that talks, um, listens, speaks based on your preferences. Um, in a promotional video for him, you know, his owner, Sam, comes home and Jibo's able to read Sam's face. It looks tired and he's like, oh, Sam, you look really tired. Uh, want me to order you a pizza? Want me to call over that cute girl on your phone. And um, so it's useful. It's a personal assistant. But some say Jibo can be a little bit creepy. So that's something, something to think about as well. Uh, finally, I think machine learning can be used for good. Um, in this example, in the medical field, this is the Da Vinci robot. Um, doctors are monitoring the robot from afar. But what if you could use voice control to improve the precision of the robot, or it has much more stamina for longer procedures? So it's pretty evident that deep learning and machine learning are present in a lot of industries. And that's due to their automation power and their predictive analysis power. But I think I want to leave you with some thoughts. You know, how much data does this concept collect? So machine learning collects a lot of data, a lot of analysis is done, and where does all this data go? And how human-like can our machines actually become in the future? 
So um, thank you so much for listening. Sorry for talking so fast. Um, and you know, let me know if you have any questions after. Thank you all so much. Thank you.